So, because you can always spend more than you make, you must develop a power over purchase. A power over purchase. Why is it that I have people come into counseling in our offices or call me on the radio that make $100 or $120 or $130 or $150,000 a year and they're broke? And then I have somebody call me up just a little while later making $45,000 a year and they got money in the 401k, they're out of debt and got an emergency fund. How is that? One developed a power over purchase and had a plan and the other one is what's known as clueless. And you can not be clueless or you can be clueless regardless of your income. But income's not your answer. Everything will be okay when I make more. No, it won't. If you don't change your ways, when you make more, you just go get a bigger car payment. Go get a bigger house payment. Lots of Americans celebrate a $300 a month raise with a $400 new car payment. <laughs> Lots of people do that. And you'll never get ahead until you develop that power over purchase. So let's look at these five things. If you do these five things when you're buying a major purchase, for most people, again, that's around $300 or more. It may be different in your household, but establish what it is because Sharon and I have a rule. We've established that number, and if we're ever going over that number, ever under any circumstances, we talk about it first and we go through these five steps. The first one is wait overnight. Wait overnight. Why? So you can kind of get over that high. You can kind of let it calm down, back away from it, cool down. It'll be there tomorrow. Oh, no, they've just got one. What is it, a Picasso? You got 16 in the back, shrink-wrapped on a pallet. Shut up. And if they don't, you can order it on eBay cheaper than when you get home anyway. Shut up. Wait overnight. Calm down. Walk away. Go look at some other options. Think about it a little bit. Carefully consider your buying motives is number two. No amount of stuff is going to equal contentment or fulfillment. And if you're in a, a blended family situation, a divorced family situation, one guy told me in that, he said, Dave, tell people, please tell people, no amount of spending will get rid of any guilt you've got either. Don't medicate dysfunction with spending. Now, I'm not against stuff. I want you to get some stuff. I just don't want your stuff to get you. So is this a need or is this a want? Let me answer that question for you. It's a want. Needs are food, shelter, clothing, transportation, and utilities. Food. Looks like most of you are doing pretty good. <laughs> clothing. No naked people. <laughs> transportation. <laughs> oh, you want me to walk? I might do some of us good. Walk a little bit. I don't want you to walk 20 miles. But, you know, we have buses to ride. <gasps> You're kidding. People die. They don't die. They just get on the bus and pay and ride. There's people that do that every day. Do I want you to do that? No. You could go get you a $500 garage sale car and ride back and forth to work, couldn't you? For a little while, and that's your living like no one else, so later you get to live like no one else. So a nicer car, a nicer house, nicer clothing, a, a better situation is not a need by definition. It's a want. Is it okay to buy once? Say yes. yes. But don't call up and tell me I needed a new car. You didn't. You wanted. We were forced to buy a bigger house. <laughs> they had a gun. <laughs> the language that we use is pretty amazing, isn't it? And it's reflective of how much rationalization we've done inside of our own hearts. And so we've just got to stop and go, it's a want, I've got the money, I'm buying it, it fits in the budget, shut up. Or it's a want, and right now, we don't have the emergency fund funded and we're fighting debt. Right now, we're not doing a want. Right now, we're going to stick with need. And we'll come back and do the wants later, and I've taught you how to do that over and over and over again. You just kind of have to think through this. See, what happens is I think we get happiness and fun confused. You can buy fun, but you can't buy happiness. It's fun to go on a cruise. I've been on several. They're great. If you hadn't, you ought to. You know, it, it's fun. It, it's fun to go on vacation, take your kids to Disney World, isn't it? It's fun. It's fun to go to the beach. It's fun to have a boat. It, it's fun to go to the movies. It's fun to go out and eat. These are all fun things. It's fun to have some new clothes. It's fun. But they're not happiness. Because I figured out if you eat enough lobster, it tastes like soap. All this stuff has an end to it, doesn't it? It's the old preacher's joke. I never saw a rider truck following a hearse. You're not going to take it with you anyway. 
So, you know, look through this. Think about it. It's like Joe, because happiness, happiness is different. Happiness is like when I'm tucking my kid in and praying with him. He looks up at me, and he's, he's, a, he's a cool, young, stud, teenager boy, and we've been praying. He says, Dad, I love you. That's good. It was cute when he was four. It's cool when he's 15. That's good. That's happiness, isn't it? You don't buy that one. You can't write that check. So buy you some fun, but don't chase happiness with money. You'll never catch it. It's a bully in the schoolyard. Do you know the difference between consumption and investment? A consumer spends money. Consume means to purchase economic goods or services. Investors put their money to work. Invest means to purchase something that offers potential profitable returns. Everybody spends money and you'll probably be making some significant purchases. At your age, a significant purchase might only be a new cell phone or a stereo system for your car. But whatever the amount is, always follow these five basic steps before making a big purchase. Number one, wait overnight. Number two, know why you're buying. Remember, stuff does not equal happiness. Number three, never buy what you don't understand. Number four, consider what you're giving up to make the purchase. And number five, get advice from someone. And always remember, if you can't pay with cash, you can't buy it. It's like the story Joe Land, the great motivational speaker, tells. He says it's kind of like when we get ready to go to school. We say, oh, I'm going to kindergarten. And then you get to kindergarten and you go, I'll be happy if I was in first grade and learning to read. And then you get to first grade and go, I'll be happy if I was cool like those sixth graders that run the school like a mafia. And then you get to sixth grade and you look over there in the middle school and go, whoa, sports, cheerleaders, changing classes with different teachers. You get a bad one, you're not there long. It's good. <laughs> and then you're in junior high and you go, I'll be happy when I get to high school because I'll have my driver's license. And then somebody's brother comes home from college and he says, college is cool, man. They don't even care if you go to class. Man, I'll be happy when I get to college. And then you get to college and you're, you know, your net worth is a half a box of no-dos, right? <laughs> you know, man, if I could just get out of college and, and meet that special someone and get married and have 2.3 kids and a picket fence. And then you get out of college and you meet that special someone and you have 2.3 kids, you go, gosh, I want to go back to college. <laughs> I'll be happy when you get out of diapers and I don't have to do diapers anymore. I'll be happy when the teenagers are gone. I'll be happy when they get married and have little kids so I can change diapers. <laughs> if you don't watch, happiness is a bully in the schoolyard. It continually draws a line and backs up. And when you step across the line, he backs up and draws it again. Happiness is where you are right now. Claim it for yourself. Don't let stuff get in that equation. You'll chase it and you'll never catch it. The old saying is, he with the most toys when he dies is dead.